Hi, this is Zach Hunt with Strength Coach Select, and uh, this is episode number one of the Speed for Your Mind podcast. Uh, privileged to have Jim Carizzi on the show today. All right, uh, today we are going to be talking about how to build and hire your staff. Jim is the Director of Strength and Conditioning for Football at Kennesaw State University. Jim, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I um, grew up in Massachusetts, a uh, small town, played football, baseball, um, went to Norwich University, small Division three military school in Vermont, where I played football and baseball again in college. Uh, worked for two years at the University of Vermont to start my career as a strength coach. Three years at the Citadel, uh, the first part of the GA, and then promoted to full-time, uh, working under Donnell Boucher. Um, and then in 2014, I got hired here to uh, help start this football program there. Never been a football, no club, no D2, no D anything. Uh, so we started from scratch. I was able to build my own weight room and you know, kind of train the guys the way we wanted to train them and, and develop it over time. So I've had a good little run. Um, I've worked with some great people. I work for some great people. I work with some great kids. Awesome. So with being a, being the director of study conditioning, you obviously, uh, you know, you're hiring, hiring guys on a regular basis every semester, especially interns. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your process hiring interns? Yeah, it, 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 it's amazing how much you learn from the day one when you do it to, to where we are now and how much I plan to learn as we go forward. But um, the first thing that I look for when I hire an intern is a desire to be a strength coach. Now, that's not what I've always done. Right. Um, I used to feel like anybody who was trying to get their feet wet in the industry as long as they were interested, could serve a role on my staff. And, and to an extent that is correct, as long as I teach them, mentor them, train them, coach them, get them where um, they need to be in order to be effective, then they could be fine. But uh, what I've realized is that you have to want to be a strength coach. You know, you have to want to be a strength coach if you're ever going to be any good at being an intern for me. Because we're going to wake you up early, we're going to work you hard, and if you don't want to be a strength coach, it's not going to be worth your time and you're not going to invest back into the program. So um, big thing for me now is wanting to be a strength coach. Now, on top of that, your experience doesn't really matter because I'm hiring an intern. I'm not hiring a graduate assistant. I'm not hiring a full-time strength coach. I'm hiring a puppy who is looking for experience. So as long as they want to be a strength coach, right. then and they show up enthused, excited, and engaged, then I can give them all of the information that they need in order to go out and coach. Um, now, being an FCS or 1AA uh, level, we don't have the five strength coach rule. Um, so we can have as many as 20 interns right. as we want and just go as, a, as an army and just attack the floor. Now, we don't do have no, that many numbers, but we've had up to 11 at a time. Um, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, as long as they want to be a strength coach and they're willing to invest and learn, then they'll be okay. Another big thing is is you know location. So say you put on a football scoop, I'm looking for uh, a summer intern, um, and you're going to work football, you're going to be coaching from day one, and you get 100 applicants or 50 applicants, a lot, right? Well, where are they coming from? Right. So I'm in, I'm in Kennesaw, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. So if I'm getting an applicant from Montana, Right. Well, does he realize that I'm in Kennesaw, Georgia? Right. So if you're trying to hire somebody, you need to make sure you're doing your due diligence and know where they're coming from. And say, okay, well, this is unpaid. Do you know that it's unpaid? Do you know that I can't give you housing? Do you know that I can't give you food? So I make sure that I get all of that information out on the line. Okay. And if you still want to relocate, you need to communicate with me your plan for where you're going to live, how you're going to pay for it, how you're going to get here. Because I say, you cannot be a distraction to me. I understand that money is a real issue, right? And if you need a part-time job, I get that. But you're not about to change your schedule with me because you can't afford to pay rent. You come for eight weeks. You should have saved up by now or you should have a plan in place. Yeah, because I brought right. you here. I brought right. you here. You don't want to be a distraction. I got you. Right. And so those are the things. Want to be a strength coach. Want to be, um, be engaged and be excited to learn. Um, and then geographically um, appropriate or, um, excuse me, um, okay. geographically appropriate or um, correct financial plan in order to achieve um, living and not being a distraction. Awesome. So, so when you obviously your interns are one thing. You look, like you said, you're hiring hiring people that have zero experience. So now I know you guys have a GA position there, right? Yes. Yes, so we do. 
So when you got when you're hiring for a GA, they've already kind of gone through that internship process. You know, what are you looking for in terms of hiring for that position? I'm looking for somebody who number one has coached before, not necessarily been an intern at a school where they swept them off the floor. I want to know that that person has been in front of athletes and has coached. I don't care if they know all the crazy periodization schemes and all the different setups and, and, and leadership styles and internal versus external queuing. I'm not worried about that stuff. I'm worried about somebody who's gotten in front of kids and has coached because that's the big thing that I'm looking for out of that position is to go out there and coach. So as I get applicants for that, I want them to show me on their resume that they've coached before. And when I talk to them, I want them to talk about the most positive experience that they had was that they were able to coach in their previous internship. Because right. they're not excited about the fact that they could coach and they're not going to be excited about working for me. Yeah. So that's one thing. I'm looking for somebody who can relate to our athlete. Now, you know, there is the stigma that when you work in a football environment, you're trying to hire, you know, ex-football players. And that is not necessarily true, right. although it's not necessarily false. If I can get a very good, well-qualified strength coach, right, who played four or five years of Division One college football, that's going to help them relate to and connect to my athlete because I only work with football. Right. Right. I would not be looking for that if I was working with a myriad of sports. Right. Another thing, and, and I don't, this isn't written in blood or, or, or etched in stone, but I'm not always or really ever looking to hire from within my own tree because I'm looking to bring somebody in who's going to bring something to the table that I don't know about. Right. So, uh, as much as I would not shut out somebody who interned for me, I'm not necessarily looking to bring in somebody who I raised because that means they're not really going to bring any new ideas to the table. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking for to evolve my program, so I'm looking for to, to have somebody come in here and bring something new. Yeah. So, so when if you have, let's say you got, obviously, you know, we've I've, I've hired some of your some of your guys, and um, you know, when you're looking at guys that you've had as interns, and then you know, when you talk about maybe not bringing them back on. So when you're, when you're hiring for those positions, what are you, what are you thinking? Like, okay, what, what, what is going to qualify one of your interns to be able to go into that position versus hiring somebody else, you know, from, from another spot? So if you so, so what you're asking, let me get this right, is that if I'm going to hire one of my own people, what do they need to be? What do they need to? Yeah, absolutely. So number one, if they left and came back, that's that's another thing. Right. So, like Ryan Poss, who left me, went to you, and then he came back to me, right? Yep. He worked for somebody else. Perfect example. Um, but you need to wow me with what you do on your own to develop yourself. So, if I turn around in my chair and I look at the desk and you're watching YouTube videos of old WWE matches, as awesome as that is, you're not showing me that you're trying to advance your knowledge um, outside of what I'm teaching you. So I had uh, an example. I had an intern for almost an entire year. His name was Will Ratcliffe, and he was always looking at the. He had he had messed up his back when he was younger, working on all types of different core correctives, mobility correctives. Well, I'm more of a, a meathead. Right. So I don't do as much reading into that stuff or my experience isn't in that stuff. So the fact that he was pouring into that meant that he was going to be able to bring something new to the table. And I knew it because of what he was investing in. Yeah. So that was helping um, that helped him get bumped from an intern to a GA spot. So what you're saying is, is if you if you, you know, if you're in the office and you're watching videos of Randy Savage, it's not going to put you in a good position to be able no. to be the next guy. No, not going to give you, no, not unless you're watching it with me. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so when you're going into you're hiring full-time staff, so you've already, you've already gone through both of these positions, you know, just obviously giving our, our viewers a perspective. You know, you've spent a year and a half as an intern. Now you've spent two years as a GA, and you're ready to, you know, number one, move into a full-time position. Number two, actually make some legitimate money, you know, be able to support okay. yourself. What are you looking for in your full-time staff members um, in terms of the hiring process? So I actually just completed one of those hires really for the first time. Um, so what I was looking for, it, it, similar things. I am looking for somebody who can relate to our athletes. Right. You know, So I'm looking for somebody who has played ball or coached ball, 
you know, that we can bring to our players and, and, and he can have conversations that they want to hear and they want to have. Mm-hmm. So that's a piece, not the piece, it's a piece. Um, and I most certainly am looking for somebody who's going to make me better. At this point, now you need to bring something that I don't have, whether it be the person you worked for is somebody that I have a tremendous amount of respect for and know how they operate and I want you to teach me their ways, right? right? Or you did something with the teams that you trained in your GA position that is so different from how I go about doing things, yet you still have elements of what I'm looking for from how we operate. That Now you're starting to give me something that I don't have that's going to make us better. Right. So the young gentleman that I just hired, a couple things. Number one, he played high-level Division II football so he can relate to our athletes. Number two, he went in his GA position – Excuse me, he interned first at a place that I know the, the director who we work for who is phenomenal at what he does. I have a tremendous amount of respect. I've observed their program from inside their weight room and from afar and have a ton of respect for. So I want him to bring me a piece of that. And then when he got a GA position, he helped start a football program, which is extremely relatable to what we're doing here. He helped start a football program. So that helps. And then the, the, another thing that he mentioned in his interview is that his big piece in his core philosophy is do no harm and that people should never get hurt in the weight room, right? And that rung a bell with me because we push our kids hard and kids do get tweaked, you know? And yeah. I want somebody who's going to come in here and make sure that my aggressiveness doesn't negatively impact our athletes. I'm always going to be aggressive. I refuse to wrap my athletes in bubble wrap. We're gonna push them. Yeah, yeah. Push our guy. That's not gonna. That's not gonna change. But if I can have a voice of reason in the back, being like, "Hey, we've been doing this for four weeks. What if you say we back off and do this? Or how about we throw this in instead of this? This is what happened when I hurt my back. I was. I did this and it got me. those things. I need that voice of reason in the room. That's from his experience, from his mentors, and from his core philosophy. He's gonna make us better because of that. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, I'm, I'm relatively. Right there with you, because I mean, you talk about a guy that does that for me. It was Ryan. You know, it got to a point with me where, um, where Ryan handled all of our speed work in the off season, because if I handle it, then we're like this. Yeah. You know, and I can't, I can't get out there. We're not going to get what we need out of it. So I'll go run another thing. You know, I'll go run a med ball station. I'll go do something else. I think you, you're saying something important. You got to have, you got to have uh, a coach. That is going to be able to say, "Hey, Jim, <laughs> shit, man, we got to dial this back." <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? like, yeah, and, you know. and that's what I'm looking for. Right. And, and a GA might not have that experience, knowledge, or ab- ability to identify the situation, and they might be too young and nervous still to step in and say that. So that's more from what I'm looking for from the full time assistant. Right. A GA, absolutely, if they have that experience, I'm going to listen to them, but they might right. not have it. I'm hiring this position. We're paying him a legitimate salary. They should have this experience, and and right. I'm gonna respect what he's got to say. Absolutely. So when you're when you're going through this big process, a um, couple things. Number one, you know, I, I I've hired people. You've hired people. Um, there's obviously some things that we've seen that you're like, wow. You're a slap dick for sending me that resume, or yeah. you know, wow, yeah, that email was terrible. You know, um, when you're looking at hiring somebody you know what is some advice that you can give to some you know people that are applying for these jobs like realistic advice obviously i know that we all have you know do the right thing make sure your emails are formatted fine but what do you have you know what's some advice that you got for people that you're trying to hire all right so number one um and i will repeat a little bit but your your email has to be professional and to the point boom 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 and it's got to be in punctually so Anybody who has a new position to hire, they're trying to get rolling on it fast. So if you're seven days in and you apply, you might not even be considered because I already have 150 resumes in my pile and I'm going through those. Um, So get it in punctually, have it be professional to the point. If it asks for resume, cover letter, list of references, create those, make it look good, right? You decide what looks good, but make it look good. And condense them into one PDF. So here's, this is a practical experience, right? I have applications rolling in, rolling in, rolling in, rolling in. 
I just start, I put them all in one folder in my inbox, right? And I go resume, print, 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 yeah. over and over again, right? Well, the only cover letters that were read were the people who had it attached into one solid PDF because I had too many people to look through to read every cover letter. I could scan through and I take the pride and I give every person who interviews who applies the, the enough respect to read their resume, right? And if that's good enough to get to their cover letter, then so be it. But I'm not going to read a cover letter of somebody I've never heard of, don't know anybody, unless I like what I see, unless it comes out. Right. Yep. right? Yep. So if I click on it, all you have is one, one attachment and it's all of them, it's all getting printed, it's all getting stapled, and it's all going to get looked at. So even if that's not a specific instruction is to put them all in one file, put them all in one file, condense them into a PDF, and that should be how you send your stuff. Um, when you interview on Skype, um, interview professionally, don't wear a hat. This is a little more informal. Yeah. Uh, you could, you're never going to get hurt to wear uh, a shirt and tie. Right. You know, you could wear a team polo. Um, what does the background look like? Is it loud? Is it quiet? Is it bright? Is it dark? If you're doing a Skype interview, it's got to look good, right? You've got to present yourself well. And on a phone interview, um, you want to make sure that you speak clearly, competently, but concisely, which means don't ramble. Yeah. Don't ramble. If I ask you a question about squatting cues and you take seven minutes and you ended up giving cues on cleaning and benching as well before I even asked about that, that's negative. Yeah. You want to answer questions with all the information necessary and no more and allow me to ask you more because I'm in, I want to know more, not because you feel like you need to say more. Right. Yeah. So by speaking too much, you sound inexperienced and you lack confidence. Yeah. By speaking clearly and concisely, you're going to show me that you know exactly what you're talking about. By all means, answer the question. Yeah, no, absolutely. You don't. don't don't just go three words and just expect everybody to just know, you know, but at the same time, you want to be as, as to the point as possible. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've, I've stopped coaches in the interview and said, Hey man, listen, like, I just don't need to hear all this shit. You know, I like just, you need to take it down and go and just answer the question. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest issues that I've seen. Bullet points, not paragraphs. Don't yeah. show me the labor. Just give me the baby. <laughs> All right. That was almost as good as uh, doing things. The Several savage, things sound well. Yeah, <laughs> Don't want to steal it all, man. <laughs> steal all these quotes. Steal yeah, them all. I still, I still use that shit every time. Every time I talk to somebody about you, know, you or you know different, I'm just like, damn, that thing just stuck in my head. So um, no, man, I appreciate it. I mean, that wraps up. So I think I, you know, I want to. Thank you for being on the show. I know you got a busy you, day today. All right, Jim is, uh, he's not going to tell you this, but he's starting camp today. So this is, uh, you know, a big day for him. And they're going into the third season, right? Third competitive yeah, season. Third, yeah. third competitive season. And they've been doing a hell of a job. So if you have not, you need to follow Jim uh, on all of his social media. He puts out great stuff. Uh, one of the guys that I actually, you know, I, I wouldn't have ever hired anybody, you know, hired the, one of the guys that I did if I wouldn't have been following Jim. And I uh, reached out to him. Um, so if you haven't, follow him. And uh, thanks, Jim, for being on the show. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a great one. You too.